And I'm also curious, uh, so talking about that neuronal survival and sort of helping it out, um, why is, is I guess, is that sort of the, the idea behind why this drug could be effective in MS as well? Because I know that you guys have, have, have an ongoing trial right now and you've reported some data that we've, uh, we've covered before. So why is there the crossover and why can it be effective for both? Right. Well, I, I think I, I contrast some differences between MS and ALS. You know, ALS is much more rapidly progressive. Um, MS is still a progressive neurodegenerative disease, but more slowly progressive. Um, but we, we, I think the commonality is, is we both see neuronal loss in both diseases. And, and our operating hypothesis is that being able to increase this um, energetic environment and supportive neurons um, will, will translate across multiple different neurodegenerative diseases. And the two clinical data sets that we've reported to date, uh, Rescue ALS and the survival data that, that we just um, referenced, mm -hmm. as well as we recently announced the top line data from our visionary MS study, which was in relapsing MS patients, and that showed overall kind of clinical benefit in multiple domains of the neuroaxis. And we're really excited to be presenting those data um, at the upcoming PACTRMS meeting um, and then ACTRMS um, in early 2023. Maybe this is a little bit too broad, but is there any possibility that this drug could have you know, a mechanistic effect on other neurological disorders or, you know, maybe sort of neurodegenerative disorders just in general. I'm curious if that maybe has been a conversation within the organization sure. or thinking about expanding that. Yeah, it, it is fascinating that many, many different neurodegenerative disorders, you know, share a commonality of energetic dysfunction. Um, and, and we do have preclinical models suggesting efficacy across a variety of different neurodegenerative diseases, MS, ALS, um, Alzheimer's, and multiple other models. Um, and so one of the overall challenges for, uh, you know, for a small company uh, with limited resources is where do we direct those resources um, and, and where do we go first? And so you know, sky is the limit, I think, for where we can continue to investigate CNMA U8. And I think we'll leverage um, each clinical data set and, and pursue where the science takes us.